This video is sponsored by EcoFlow. EcoFlow is a company who creates eco-friendly power solutions that allow you to have renewable power anywhere. This is a power station designed to be quiet, eco-friendly while providing a clean power source. EcoFlow can provide huge power capacity to keep your home and devices fully charged during a power outage and emergencies. This simple box can open up a realm of possibilities. I'll break this up into a few sections so you can get a feel for it. First thing I'll cover the features of this, why I want it, and what I think average consumer can do with it as well. And finally, I'll talk about the specs. This unit is as straightforward as it gets. I'll run through all sides of this unit to bring some clarity. So if we look at the front, along the front there's an LCD panel that gives you all the readings that you need to know about this unit. Just below that you have the button that turn on the Wi-Fi feature on this. Below that you have two USB type A, two USB fast charging ports, and two USB type C. And this little gray button allow you to toggle the USB power section on and off. And you'll see this button near every section that has an output. And at the bottom you have a power switch, Let's call this side one. If this box don't provide enough power for you, you can always expand it with two extra battery ports. There's not much happening on this side except for the fan to help keep this unit cool, which is on both sides. Moving to the back of the unit, just under the door, you have a port to connect a solar panel, a switch to control how fast this unit charge up. And right beside that, there's an AC power socket to charge the unit. And finally, an overload protection switch. So if we scroll on down, you'll see this unit come with six AC output, two DC output, and one car charging port. Navigating back to the top, you'll see there's not much happening here, but handles. They've proven to be incredibly strong, which is needed to tote this unit, which is 48 pounds. And last but not least, the bottom has a durable rubber base, so you can place this on any surface without any worry. Why would I want this unit, and what will I do with it? I can recall a few years ago, I lost power during a hurricane, and I I went two days without it. The crazy thing is, with an exception to one of my neighbor, everyone else had power the entire time. In that short period of time, I realized how much power dependent we are. We have no control over natural disasters and this unit would have been a game changer then and moving forward. For me, having this unit is gonna work wonders. Years ago, I trenched my backyard so I can install electrical pipe, low voltage stuff, and water lines, all for future projects. In my area, if I wish to add any exterior electric, I'll need to pull a permit. To avoid pulling any permits prematurely, I can use this Delta Max to power up anything I need in the backyard. While this is not the ideal permanent installation I would like at the moment, it's still a cheaper option than hiring an electrician when you factor in trenching, wiring, materials, and the labor hours. With this unit, sure, it's almost 50 pounds, but you grab one thing, bring it outside, and you're done. It's not wet rated, so let's not lose sight of that. I was doing some research on this unit and realized they do have a waterproof case in the works, and I'm not sure when that's coming out or if it's even out yet but that's something to keep an eye out for. For me, the value of this unit is not limited to backup power, but to your needs and imagination. My unit will see most of its usage in the backyard, traveling, heading to the beach, or just being on standby for emergency backup. Nowadays, with smart TVs being the norm, I only need power and enough Wi-Fi range, and you can entertain yourself outdoors. As an example, this unit has less than 50% charge, and I can run this 50-inch TV and a bug zapper for seven plus hours. I know how I plan to use this unit, but what can average consumers do with it? Often you look at something in its most simple form without any imagination, and it's hard to comprehend how to use it, and how it can impact or change the way you do things. As I've been testing this unit, I've come to be more and more impressed with it and its performance. Without being able to touch it, I'm gonna share some of the experience with you guys to give you some ideas and more insight on this unit. When I think about this unit, not just for myself, but for others, I feel like this is great for everyday people looking to be prepared for unpredictable power outages and so much more. I tested this unit in just about every way I possibly could think of. I washed a load of laundry on this unit, and while I was doing that, I even connected the app, played with it to get a great sense of what it do. Now that I'm seeing this, it's great because you can see the battery status, especially when it's not facing you. Not just that, you get to see a range of information about this unit from controlling things to seeing battery status and so much more. The cycle on the washing machine ran for about an hour and 10 minutes, which used up about 17% of the battery. Not saying anyone would want to dedicate their unit to a washing machine during an emergency, but if you had to, it's possible. One solution to keep your unit charging is adding a solar panel.
Dealing with hurricanes in the past, I know exactly what it's like to be without electricity. And one of the first things that come to mind is preventing the food in the refrigerator from spoiling. Whatever you wanna rely on, it needs to be able to stand up to those times. And I'm gonna check out this unit and see how it fares out with the refrigerator and all the other appliances that's capable of being plugged into it. I'm gonna unplug the fridge from the wall and plug it into this unit. While I'm at it, I may as well plug in other appliances. Right now, with everything in a standstill mode, and it looks like it's always calibrating, I can get around 33 hours with the fridge, the toaster not being used, and the microwave. If I open the door on the microwave, let's see what happens. So right now the bulb is on and it's telling you that if the bulb stay on in this position, according to this, you'll get about 19 hours of runtime with that bulb being on. Let's see what happens when I run the microwave. I'm gonna put this cup of water in it and turn it on. So with the microwave running, it's burning through these batteries. I'm gonna say like the microwave is probably something we don't wanna use, but it's telling you right now that the battery is at 80%, and if I constantly, I keep that microwave constantly running, I'm only gonna get around 52 minutes out of this unit with the fridge plugged in, the toaster, and the microwave running. With the toaster engaged, it looks like the heating elements inside the toaster is pulling a ton of current. The LCD is always calibrating based on its current state. The moment I stop the toaster, the remaining hours on the unit will go up from two to a higher number. And honestly, if you have kids during the power outage, the only thing that's important to them is entertainment and staying cool. So as long as you have fans and AC unit, anything that is rated and appropriate to plug into this unit, you're gonna be just fine. So moving over into the family room, I set up a number of devices that I believe would be in use during a power outage. What I have here is three TVs, one laptop, two iPads, one cell phone, a DLSR camera, a 27 inch iMac computer, and two studio monitors. Some things here would not be deemed emergency, of course. However, it allowed me to put some strain on this unit. You can get a sense with all this load running on this unit that's not even fully charged that you're getting a few hours out of this unit. So much of this are great examples of how typical consumers would be using a unit like this. But let's talk about it from a construction phase and how could you use this unit out in the field. I was super excited to stick power tools on this unit and try to see how it performs. Why upgrade to battery power tools when you don't have to if you're working on a job site without power? So I've tried a few tools and only one of them really put this thing to the test. I tried a job site table saw, had no issues there. I even tried a miter saw on it and while it did its job, I did notice there was a difference when plugging it into an AC outlet versus using the EcoFlow unit. The biggest difference I noticed, it felt like it had a softer start while pressing the trigger trying to cut versus plugging into an outlet. It feels more aggressive from the start, but once it's spinning, it seemed to be the same. As far as the table saw, I didn't notice any difference there or with any other power tools. Maybe you need to do some welding in a remote area and you need to do some small repairs, whether it's on the gate or a fence or something along those lines, something that needs some welding. This unit in some occasion could get the job done. I would not rely on this to be a dedicated power source in the field, but small stuff, I think it'd be ready for it. I think another way to get the most out of this unit is if you're in video production, filmmaking, and photographer. I think as a filmmaker, 
I do everything stationary when it comes to making videos. At least for the short term, it's quite rare if I go other places to do work. Filming is a part of what I do and typically wherever I go, I have power. However, I can see this unit being a valuable part of a photographer and filmmaking toolkit. Whether you need to recharge your battery, being a power source for video lights, cameras, camera slides, monitors, and so on. At this point, the brand is backed by investors. They've continued to use crowdfunding as a way of seeking out open-minded early adopters of their portable power station technology. Products are already into production and they plan to ship out this fall. Unlike gas generators, you can operate this unit within your home and not be exposed to carbon monoxide. It's quiet and with such a compact size weighing just 48 pounds, it's easy to transport. One of the more impressive thing about this unit is you can go from zero to 100% charge in 1.8 hours. That's almost the same amount of time it take me to charge my cell phone. I have the Delta Max. It's a step up from the original Delta and there's an even bigger unit, the Delta Pro. I can only imagine the possibilities of that unit. Here are some of the notable comparison between the two. The Delta Pro is EcoFlow's highest capacity station at 3,600 watt hours and it's expandable to 10,800 watt hours with two extra batteries. The Pro is super powerful and has the ability to power almost every heavy duty device such as an air conditioner, fridge, and so much more. The Extreme technology makes it possible to fast charge through AC outlets going from zero to 80% within two hours, which is the fastest on the market. The battery management system protects the power station by monitoring the voltage, current, and the temperature in real time and optimizing the operation of the whole battery system. The Delta Pro and the Delta Max could be a great addition to your toolkit, whether it's for outdoor, indoor, or travel uses. Check out my link in the description where you can visit EcoFlow crowdfunding site. There you can find out more information and back these amazing products. That is it for this one. See you in the next one.